Hi everyone, today we'll be talking about the organic acid condition isovaleric acidemia. Um, we'll jump right in here into the description of the disorder. So isovaleric acidemia is an inborn organic acid disorder. Um, it was discovered in 1966 when there were two siblings who were having the same recurring symptoms and um, of metabolic acidosis, which were typically resulting in coma and stupor. So this doctor recognized the smell that seemed to be associated with these children and um, with the organic acid, which is isovaleric acid that was building up in their system. Um, it has a very distinctive sweaty feet type of smell associated with the disorder, and it's pretty rare. It affects one in every 230,000 infants. Um, so in a brief description, it involves digestion and breakdown of the amino acid acid leucine. And leucine is an essential amino acid in our bodies, which means that our body does not make it. So we have to supplement our um, diet with it. <clears throat> and we'll talk more about that here. So the major characteristics of isovaleric acidemia is that it is a gene mutation that uh, makes our body lack isovalera coa dehydrogenase enzyme in our body. So this enzyme, um, the dehydrogenase enzyme, is used to break down proteins, specifically um, a, one of the processes in leucine breakdown or leucine metabolism. So the body, like I said, does not synthesize leucine, so we have to obtain it from our body, from our diet. It is an essential amino acid in that sense. And our body will produce an overabundance of isovaleric acid because um, it cannot break break it down, break down leucine properly, um, which means we cannot grow properly and our proteins in our body cannot function properly. And isovaleric acid is an organic acid, so that just means that our body can make this on its own um, when our body is in a, this kind of state. So there are two different um, forms of this disorder. So acute neonatal is found within two weeks of birth. The baby will be born um, seemingly healthy, and then one to 14 days later, they will start having um, signs and symptoms of this disease. It's very, very life-threatening, and that's why it's very important to find it quickly. Um, there's also a chronic intermittent form, and this is a form that's found throughout their life, um, and it, it happens when protein is ingested into the system, and um, there will be signs and symptoms associated with that as well. So the main sign um, of this disorder is distinctive sweaty feet smell um, in breath and urine. So the symptoms of the neonatal form is that the baby, once they ingest um, mother's breast milk or any type of uh, uh, formula that has protein added into it, they will have severe ketoacidosis, um, they will have start having convulsions, they'll be very, very tired or lethargic, and they will also have severe dehydration. Um, because again, their body can't uptake everything that it needs to when it needs to. Um, the symptoms of the chronic form is that anybody who has this disease in the chronic form will ingest protein. They cannot break down leucine properly, and so they will display a mental retardation after um, eating any type of protein like that. So there is a molecular cause for this disorder. Um, it is a gene mutation of the IVD gene. Um, so, and it's located on the chromosome uh, 15. So in our body, we have um, sets of chromosomes and this is what they look like here. And um, they're labeled by numbers and areas. So on chromosome 15, the Q arm right here, it's located right in here, the mutation. And uh, the IVD gene, if it's mutated, it cannot give the instructions to the protein to make the isovaleric-CoA dehydrogenase enzyme. And so there are six different variants of this gene mutation, and we'll talk about this in just a minute, but this mutation is deadly to the central nervous system and makes it incapable of operating essentially. And uh, that's what causes isovaleric acidemia. So here are the different types of mutations. We'll quickly run through these. Um, type one mutation is just a normal size protein. There is a um, added gene into there, um, which substitutes for a different one. So it puts one in, takes one out. 
and um, changes the way that it, it reads. Um, so at the protein level, the amino acid sequence, because there's a substitution, it gets converted into leucine to proline, which changes, or glycine to valine. And so that changes the entire structure of the protein. And the type 3 variant is a little bit different because it's shorter, and it just has a sequence alteration. Um, so again, changes the sequence of the protein or the amino acids that build up our proteins. And then um, it's called a frame shift mutation. So with the frame shift mutation, it'll read completely differently. So where there's a mutation, it will then read completely differently from there on out. So it'll change the entire protein essentially. Um, and then it has a stop uh, pro or a stop gene in there too, which makes it so the overall gene expression is completely changed, um, or essentially not there, not really there. The type 5 and uh, type 4, type 6, type 5 and type 6, um, there's no sequence alteration in that. Um, there's normal coding, and um, type 6 does not have any mRNA at all. So here's the mode of inheritance. So in order to receive this kind of disorder or be affected by this disorder, you, both of your parents have to either... Um, be affected by the disorder or they have to be carriers. So it's an autosomal recessive inheritance. So this is on our chromosomes, um, on our autosomal chromosomes, not on our sex chromosomes. And if dad is a carrier for the disease, not necessarily affected, but he does have a carrier um, and the mother is a carrier, they will have an affected child. They could have a one in four chance of having an affected child. Um, so 25% probability that they will have a child with isovaleric acidemia. Here is a simple pedigree explaining this. So because it is recessive, it can skip generations. So neither one of these um, people have the disease, but they are carriers for it. So they pass it on to two of their children. Um, they did not pass it on to two other of their children, um, but this one is a carrier because you can see that down the line, um, they do have an affected grandchild with this disorder. Um, over here, also, you can see people are carriers, carriers here, they have an affected um, child here out of the three. Um, Tiffany must also be a carrier because she then passes it on to one of her children later. So as you can see, it is an autosomal recessive because it skips generations and it does not go with males or females more likely um, one over the other. So there are some options for genetic testing of this disease. There are uh, essentially 64 genetic tests available. The most common genetic test, though, is the newborn screening test, which is mostly mandatory in most states. There are some ways to um, decline that uh, genetic test, but essentially it's mandatory in most states, and it's done before the newborn leaves the hospital. So there are two samples taken of the blood, of the little heel prick of the baby, and um, they're able to send that off and get any sort of information on a multitude of disorders. And there's a lot of organic acid disorders that are tested in this newborn screening panel. And isovaleric acid is one of them because it can be so life-threatening. Uh, because infants, like I talked about earlier, can be health, completely healthy at birth until they ingest the protein from the mother's breast milk or formula. And then they will um, start having symptoms, severe symptoms that could be life-threatening for them. So it's very, very um, imperative that uh, parents do this type of testing for newborns because of the severity of it. So there are some costs associated typically with this um, genetic uh, testing. So it ranges anywhere, depending on what state you live in, ranges anywhere from zero to $150. So um, I think Alabama is $150 depending on the state that you're in. So um, good to check that out too, but there are some uh, different programs and things that can help with genetic testing if possible. But the most crucial one is the newborn screening panel that must, must be done at birth. So there are some treatment options. Um, 
there is no cure essentially, but there are some management things that doctors can do to help maintain a person with this disorder. So they work really closely with a nutritionist and um, their physician. The nutritionist will help um, give them medical protein that's really low in protein um, and can kind of manage it that way. And then there's also some medications that um, can be recommended, which are glycine and L-carnitine. And these are some amino acids, again, which help rid the body of any unwanted isovaleric acid and any other harmful substances that may be in the body too. So that's a really great way to manage this type of disorder. If patients with this disorder accidentally or unknowingly ingest um, protein and in their diet and they go into metabolic crisis, it is really, really important that they get immediate treatment. And they can also at the hospital get an IV of bicarbonate or glucose, um, which helps uh, rid the body of the isovaleric acidemia or isovaleric acid. And then um, they can move forward with other treatment from there. So in conclusion, isovaleric acidemia is a life-threatening inborn organic acid condition. It is always found in newborns, mostly, and um, genetic testing is available um, for this if it's if there's a concern that the child might have chronic intermittent form. Um, there is genetic testing available after newborn stage, but um, typically it is always found in newborns. And their um, early diagnosis and treatment is crucial to the survival of the child. So here are some references. I hope that was informative and I look forward to hearing everyone else's presentations.